Hi, I'm David. I'm a tech lead at QLogic, and today I'm going to talk to you on natural language processing and how to mine insights from unstructured data. Natural language processing is the ability of a program to understand human language as it is spoken. Massive amounts of data are stored in text and natural language, however, not all of it is directly machine understandable. The ability to process and analyze this data has a huge scope in our current business and day to day lives. However, Processing this unstructured kind of data is a complex task. Natural language processing techniques provide the basis for harnessing this massive amount of data and making it useful for further processing. A very simple example of the usage of NLP in our day-to-day -day lives is identifying meaning from textual conversations via email. For example, if you have received your flight ticket via email, it will be automatically added to your calendar. Another live example that we are currently working on is gathering sales signals from real-time data that people are generating. Let's take a look at how we can build this. NLP tasks are closely graded. Some of the categories in the order of precedence include tokenization. This task splits a text roughly into words depending on the language being used. It can identify when single quotes are part of words or period or do not imply sentence boundaries. Sentence breaking. This task involves splitting text into a sub sentences by a predefined boundary. This boundary could be a new line or a regular expression that will match something to be treated as a sentence boundary. Example, a full stop, exclamation, question, p tag, html tag, etc. Or you may specify the whole document to be defined as a sentence. Parts of speech tagging. The next task involves classifying words within a sentence and labeling them with the tags of the corresponding parts of speech. Lemmatization. For grammatical reasons, document may have multiple words that have similar meaning. Example, read, reads, reading. It would be useful for a search for one of those terms to match documents containing the other. The goal of lemmatization is to break these words down to a common base word. Example, all of the words which correspond to read. Coreference resolution. Coreference resolution aims to map all the mentions within a text to a named entity. Example, a person can be referenced by Anthony Hopkins or by another expression like the Welsh actor, him, his, he, the 80 year old. If you want to know the context of the expression anywhere within a document, we can generate the mapping with a coreference resolution. Named Entity Recognition NER NER involves pulling names, locations, people, companies, dates, and things in general from the text and determining their context. The, the idea is classifying the relevant entities within the document into predefined categories by annotating them with tags. Entity extraction can add a wealth of semantic knowledge to your content. You can also build your own list of custom entities for tracking or to train your own machine learning models for discovery purposes to find entities specific to your domain. Automatic summarization. The art of creating short, coherent, and accurate content based on vast knowledge sources. Could it be articles, documents, blogs, social media, or anything over the web? For example, in the news feed, summarization of sentences for news articles. So let's dive deeper into named entity recognition. Uh, let's start with Stanford NER annotator. For the English language, by default, the annotator recognizes named person, location, organization, miscellaneous, numericals, money, number, ordinal, percent, and temporal, date, time, duration, set, entities. These are 12 classes. Included with the Stanford NER modules are three modules trained on different data sets. Three class, four class, and seven class. The three class data set containing location, person, organization, Four class annotating location, person, organization, and other miscellaneous. Seven class annotating location, person, organization, money, percent, date, and time. You can train your models on custom training data as well to suit your custom needs. The default models that are trained on a million tokens. The more training your data has, the more accurate your model should be. If you have a tag names of people on Indian origin with the assumption a corpus does not already exist, for example, you probably want to train your custom data set. The next being Stanford Regex NER Annotator. The intention of building this annotator was to have the ability to annotate those entities that could not be annotated by the Stanford NER. This is done using regular expressions over a sequence of tokens. Regex NER has a simple rule-based interface where you may specify rules as labeled entities. These rule files may have tab delimited regular expressions with the corresponding NERs. For example, the one displayed on the screen. These rule files will be utilized in the annotation phase to annotate match tokens. Adding the regex NER annotator adds support for fine-grained and additional entity classes like email, URL, city, state or province, country, nationality, region, title, 
ideology, criminal charges, cause of death, 11 classes for a total of 23 classes, including those of Stanford NER. However, writing explicit rules to cover all cases may not always be feasible. In such cases, you probably want to have an ML model to integrate various sources to learn the classification of entities. Tools like Regex NER is more useful at a higher level to augment such ML models. Here is an example code in Java. Stanford Token Regex NER Annotator Typically, in NLP systems, text is first tokenized and then annotated with information, example, parts of speech tagging or NER tagging. Since regular expressions are more string-based, token regex may be expressed with tokens or parts of speech tags or even NER tags, thereby making it more convenient and comprehensible to specify regular expressions. This gives us more abstraction in specifying patterns. For example, one of the interesting challenges that we came across recently was to develop a market research product for a client who had outsourced software development to us. In the project, organizational data should be extracted by crawling and processing millions of online pages. Have a look at this. This expression will match statements with names of people who are the CEO. The SU time library was built using token regex. It is a library for finding and normalizing time expressions. That is, it will convert next Wednesday at 3 p.m. to something like a date type value, depending on the assumed current reference time. Semgrex. Semgrex is a query language to query from a dependency graph that represents the grammatical relationships between the words of the text. In such a graph, the nodes in the graph are the words of the text, and the edges are grammatical relationship between those nodes. A grammatical relationship holds between a governor and a dependent. The most important part of Semgrex is the ability to query through specifying relations between the nodes of the, or a group of nodes in a regular expression-like format. Following is a graphical representation of the Stanford dependencies for a sentence. John took the bat. Here, John will be identified as a proper noun singular. Took will be identified as a verb past tense. The will be identified as a determiner. Bat will be identified as a noun singular or mass. Following is a code snippet demonstrating the usage of Semgrex pattern in Java. The Semgrex pattern in the code finds all the pairs of nodes connected by a subject, relation, in which the first node is the governor of the relation with two other nodes, that is, the subject and a dependency object. Here we have captured the subject relation and named it subject, and also captured the object relation and named it object. using the NER annotations. Now, with the extracted entities within the document and information from other annotators, like the NLP modules example parts of speech tagging, we can build a data structure that represents the meaning of our text expressed through the relationships between the nodes and edges. This concept of a knowledge graph is sort of a network of real-world entities and their interrelations organized within a graph. A semantic graph is a directed or an undirected graph consisting of vertices which represents concepts and edges which represents semantic relations between the concepts. You will often hear semantic graphs referred to as knowledge graphs. Now let's see how we can actually build a semantic graph. Taking an example with the statement, John Lennon was born in Liverpool to Julia and Alfred Lennon. Post the annotation phase, we get the NER tags. Here is a graph representing the information extracted from the NLP phase. We understand that the text Alfred and Julia are persons that Liverpool is a location that Alfred and Julia are the parents of John Lennon. Such a graph would effortlessly help us run queries like what are the names of John Lennon's parents or where was John Lennon born. Through one statement we are able to get insights. Imagine the kind of knowledge such a graph could hold while it processes and understands news articles, websites, blogs, documents. Let's see what we have learnt in this video. NLP and some of its tasks. How we can use NER to annotate entities and custom entities. An overview of how you can use this data to build a semantic graph. The kind of insights you can obtain from this semantic graph is vastly profound. Currently, the team and I are working on live projects and consulting for a wide variety of domains such as fintech, healthcare, market research, this approach can also be further extended to highly sensitive areas of security, military intelligence, etc. and can be also extended to other commonly used NLP frameworks such as NLTK or SPACI. 
Now we can safely conclude that NLP can be used in combination with other big data technologies like Spark to process and mine insights from large scale data and from multiple sources. The results may also be pipelined to other multiple areas, for example, relational databases, graph databases, for performing complex relationship analysis, monitoring and alerting tools, and analytics engines like Spark for further big data processing or other custom software development. Thank you for watching this video with me. If you have any questions, you can put it down in the comments below and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel.